Okay, so this is turning out to be far, far longer than I thought it would be. I didn't think it would be such a long video. I didn't think I'd have so much to say about these people. Um, and keep in mind, I'm not a great scholar. I'm not, you know, an academic. It's This is just talking from, you know, I do like to read um, history and biographies. And I did grow up in a community where we lived these people. You know, these were our celebrities and pop stars. So I guess I have quite a lot of native knowledge. Um, but, and I think I try to be quite accurate in what I say and acknowledge when I don't know things. But, um... Um, yeah, I, I'm not an expert or anything like that, um, but I, I hope you, I, you know, I'm finding this enjoyable to do. I hope you find it interesting as well. Let's come back to the Masilis Ishuram. As I said, beautiful writer, beautiful, clear thinker. You know, he has a beautiful mind and it's in all his, not all his books. We'll come back to his mystical writings in a moment. But he, he, I, I don't know. He, he, the, Mesir, the Ramchal is bipolar. He has this incredibly rational mode, incredibly rational. And then he has this wacky mystical mode where he just goes off the rails. And, you know, he he completely, you know, he's hallucinogenic. He imagines there's a maggot, there's an angel telling him stuff, completely bonkers stuff, right? Um, and, and how these two fit in together, I have no idea. Um, um, but at least in his rational modes, um, you know, he has all these books on, he has a book on logic, um, which was my first introduction to, to Aristotelian logic, by the way. You know, it's nothing nothing in his book on logic, Saifa Hahigoyan. It's not original, by any means. I mean, it's a, a classical Aristotelian logic. But for me, in the Jewish world, I obviously didn't have access to kind of secular philosophy. This was, so his book, Saifa Hahigoyan, was my first introduction to Aristotelian logic. Um, and I really, really loved it. Um, he has, um, what's it called? His 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 theological book, is it? Derech, Derech, Derech Amina? Derech, no, Das, Das Tevinas? I think it's called Das Tevinas. Da'at Tevunot, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, a book systematizing his ideas about the afterlife and the soul. Systematic, coherent, very pleasurable read. And obviously, um, his highlight is uh, Masilas Yishurim, his Musa book, his book of ethics. Um, even though he is based in traditional literature, and he will reference Chazal and Gemurah and, and Psikim, he is basically giving you almost kind of a scholastic um, um, kind of early enlightenment version of what is to be, to be a nice human being. You know, it's a human being who is in control of his actions, control of his emotions. Um, you know, um, he has a lot of virtue ethics in there, you know, everything in moderation, the golden rule. Um, again, I don't think he's incredibly original necessarily, um, but he's a great systematizer, and it's so nice to read. I've read Mercedes Ashura many times. I I, um, I had a period in my teens when I would read this daily. I had a daily session. And by the way, you, you know, Mercedes Ashura, you don't read it as a book. You live it. You know, you you know, I, in the traditional Musa way, um, um, you know, I would um, the way I do it um, was, you know, it's with a song, and you sway, and you, you admonish yourself. You know, you internalize it, and and it's meant to shape you and make you a better person. Um, and I found it incredibly therapeutic, incredibly meditative, and I found it had a profound impact on me. You know, I found solace in it, you know, a book that kind of taught me how to be a better person. Um, and I think even to this day, probably, some of my conceptions about being a nice, being a good person and what it means um, to be a person in control of yourself and a person who carries on working on your character and becoming a better person is influenced by this. You know, I still have this conception of you know, life is a journey where you're trying to become better and trying to um, refine yourself. Um, so, yeah. Okay, now, his mystical writings, as I said, completely wacky. Um, and he got into a lot of trouble for them. Um, so, that makes him a quite schizophrenic figure. Um, I still think, I even, you know, even... Th this shows you how much appreciation I have for his language and for his rational writing. That even though, you know, I, I have great disdain for the mystical writers, as you can see in the C tier... Even despite of that, Mercedes is the Ramchal is so great that he makes it into S tier despite all of that. So, you know, basically his, if not for his mystical writings, he would be in kind of even a higher tier than the S tier. But um, at least he's in the S tier. Okay, let's come back to this guy. This is the Baisiosu, Rabbi Yosef Karo, the author of the Shilchan Aruch and also of uh, other books, uh, notably the Baisiosu, um, which is a commentary on the Tor. Uh, um, very, very, very knowledgeable 
scholar, you know, command, you know, his writing is literally covers all of the Torah. All of Allah, of, of all of the Allahic works from beginning to end, he covers. And his Bas Yosef is some really solid reasoning. Really, really solid reasoning. He's, he's, you know, he's, he makes a lot of sense. Um, he, you know, he's well backed up. You know, it's, it's quite nice to read his arguments. Um, he's, I think you read his arguments and you tend to agree. Um, um, and his Shulchan Aruch is very influential. Now, I'm not a massive fan of the Shulchan Aruch, um, as many people in his generation and in the few generations after him are also not massive fans. You know, the Maral, who we mentioned earlier, did not like the Shulchan Aruch. They thought he is just reducing what should be a complex system of argumentation and, you know, idiosyncratic judgment based to kind of formulas that everyone has to follow. Um, and the Shulchan Aruch was certainly not the final word, by no stretch of the imagination. Later commentators, notably there are more, uh, which we'll come to in a moment, um, kind of added and disagreed. And, you know, obviously it it, it, it wasn't the end of the discussion. But um, so I'm not a massive fan of Shulchan Aruch. On the other hand, it was incredibly helpful for people who didn't have access to the full range of the Talmudic analysis and discussion, didn't have the time to go back to the sources. They can just refer to the Shulchan Aruch. Um, at least that was the idea. As we know, that didn't end up happening because you can't just refer to the Shulchan Aruch because there's been so much disagreement and so much development since. Uh, that the Shulchan Aruch is by no means the final word. Now you might consult something like the Mishnah Brewer. Um, the Mishnah Brewer is now, you know, more, you know, if, if you uh, want to find kind of almost like something you can rely on for practical purpose, halakhically, you don't go to the Shulchan Aruch, you go to something like the, Shuch, uh, the, the Mishnah Brewer. And I imagine in 200 years' time, you know, that will be superseded as well, and you won't be able to consult the Mishnah Brewer either. Um, so I don't know if I'm a massive fan of Shulchan Aruch, but I can't deny how revolutionary it was. Um, and influential it was. Um, I think that by Siosov, his commentary on the Torah, I think I find more, uh, personally, I find um, kind of more brilliant, more kind of uh, useful almost. Um, uh, great commentary. Um, um, either way, definitely a very influential thinker. I think easily goes into A tier. I think he's an A tier thinker, um, easily. Okay, next up we have Rav Moshe Feinstein. So he is, he is a 20th century uh, halachist. Um, not only halachist, by the way, um, but he's mostly known as a halachist, um, multi-volume responser, um, Igris Moshe, incredibly influential as a posek, as a as a you know as somebody you can rely on for practical guidance in halachic matters. Very respected, although Satma, the community I grew up in, hated him because he had halachic disagreements with the Satma Rebbe. Um, he was seen as too lenient in many things when it comes to to uh, um, chol of stam milk. That a Jew didn't watch uh, being milked. Um, Mechitza, his he allowed um, separation between men and women to be shorter, um, and other things, for, um, fertility treatments, and so on. Um, still incredibly influential, and also all around really, really nice person. You know, people the the people who know him um, say again, Balmidas, refined person, um, and um, very and and very brilliant man as well. And he has um, he has writings, commentary on the Shas as well, on Talmud. Um, um, I I don't know how inf they're not in the larger scheme of things. They're not his his Talmudic writings aren't that influential. I must say in in the in the great yeshivas you don't study him a lot. Um, his Talmudic commentary, um, um, I think probably because he has a different style. He's not in the analytic brisk style. I think he's more in a more commonsensical kind of plain meaning style. Uh, to be honest, I'm not very familiar uh, with his Talmudic writings, um, so I don't know much. Um, but I think um, hmm. Is he, does he deserve A tier? Is he that high, A tier? Um, I, hmm, between B and A, I think a low A probably. Probably a low A. Um, um, and I wonder down there, you know, if, if we were doing this 300 years down the line, if if we would still regard him as that influential? Eh, probably not. Probably if I was doing this in 300 years time, he would be in B tier, but I'm doing it now and it's, you know, it's the, the 20th century is yesterday. So I think, you know, he left a mark on kind of, on our generation, you know, in our time, he's still, he's considered very influential. Okay, we'll carry on uh, in a moment.